580 AM, KJMJ, Alexandria, 1360 AM, KNIR, New Iberia, 89.7 FM, KBIO, Natchitoches, and 91.1 FM, KOJO, Lake Charles. In Texas, on 1250 AM, KDEI, Port Arthur. In Ohio, on 88.7 FM, WHJM, Anna, 1600 AM, WULM, Springfield, with translator W277AO, 103.3 FM, Eden Dayton. In Pennsylvania, on 88.1 FM, WHHN, Hollidaysburg, Altoona. In Mississippi, also on 88.1 FM, WOLM, Diaboville, Biloxi. In Wisconsin on 91.3 FM, WRMW Peshtigo. In Florida on 91.9 FM, WMKL Hammocks, Miami. And in Tennessee on 1280 AM, WMCP Columbia. With translator W255DK 98.9 FM, also in Columbia. Healing of the Soul. A walk with the great physician, our Lord Jesus Christ, the healer of the wounds of the soul. Here is your host, Samia Zumount. Hello, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to Radio Maria, a Catholic voice in your home. I'm your host, Samia Zumount, with your program, Healing of the Soul. This is a call-in radio program show. And the phone number to call in at any time you feel prompted to call in is 1-866-333-6279, 1-866-333-6279. I would love to pray for any petition you have in your heart or if the topic touches you in any way, I would love to pray with you or for you or for your intentions. Uh, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Christ is risen, indeed he is risen, glorious Easter uh, of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ to you and to your entire family. I, I want to remind you that Radio Maria is 100% listener supported uh, radio station. Um, so to pay for the administrative costs, we rely completely on your generosity. Um, so if you feel prompted in your heart to call and make a don donation, please call Radio Maria at 888-408-0201. I will repeat that, 1-888-408-0201. Or you can go online and make a donation also on radiomaria.us and click on the tab, Donate. Um, we're going to start with a prayer before we start my topic, which is, do we really trust in the infinite divine mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ for all of us? And if we don't, what is the cause of that? Why is it that we don't trust in him? Uh, so let's start with a prayer as always. Prayer is the oxygen of our souls. I cannot do it without prayer. Uh, we need to glorify first of all. Uh, God uh, for everything that we have for uh, giving us life for uh, especially now as we have just lived through his passion death and resurrection um, we you know I think of how much he suffered he suffered excruciating death because he loves you and loves me infinitely if we could only truly understand that if we could truly allow that to sink into our hearts how loved we are to pay the price of our sins and to redeem us uh, so let's start with a prayer in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit amen heavenly father we praise you we adore you we glorify you we worship you we give you thanks heavenly father for creating us for granting us one more day of life for each breath of air that we take every heartbeat that we have that we so often take for granted we forget how precious how precious our lives on earth are and we forget that everything that we have absolutely everything is a gift from you, is a grace from you. Forgive us, Heavenly Father, for our ingratitude. Forgive us 
when we take credit for our accomplishments instead of thanking you, thanking you for absolutely everything that we have. Lord Jesus Christ, we praise you, we adore you, we glorify you, we worship you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for every drop of your blood that you shed for us, everything that you suffered for us, your passion, your death, to redeem us, Lord Jesus, to pay the price of our sins, to triumph over death so that we can share eternal life with you if we choose you, of course. Lord Jesus, in this special time that we're living, we're in the octave of the, the, the resurrection. Lord Jesus, I pray that right now you can cover each and every one of us, every member of our families with your precious blood. Cleanse us with your precious blood from everything that does not come from you. Any doubts that we have, about you, our lack of trust in you, any fears that we have in our hearts, any spirits of despair. So many people, Lord, are living in despair these days. So many people contemplating suicide. So many people living with addictions to alcohol, to drugs, to pornography, to sex to gambling, to social media. So many people living with depression and anxiety. Lord Jesus, you are the only one that knows, who knows the root of all our wounds. You are the divine physician of our souls and bodies. I pray, Lord Jesus, that by the merits of your passion, death, and resurrection, that you would set us free, that you would heal us from the root of whatever we are struggling with. So many people are struggling with different things, Lord Jesus. Heal us, Lord Jesus. Set us free, liberate us, Lord Jesus. I also pray, pray Lord Jesus, by the, by the merits of your passion, death, and resurrection, you would touch and embrace the hearts of anybody who has never experienced your love, the hearts of all sinners and unbelievers, the hearts of all the leaders of the world, the politicians, the, po the powerful people in the world, the people who work in secular mainstream media, Lord Jesus, everything that we have is a gift from you. And one day we will stand before you to give an account for all the decisions we have made on earth. So I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would touch the hearts of all the decision makers, the politicians, so that they would follow your commandments, Lord Jesus, and not fall in the traps of the enemy, the trap of power, money, lust. Lord Jesus, our lives on earth are so short, so short in comparison to eternity. Help us to keep our eyes always fixed on you, Lord Jesus. Come Holy Spirit, Come, Holy Spirit, and fill us with your love. Fill us with your truth. I consecrate myself fully to you, Holy Spirit. I surrender to you my misery, my nothingness, so that you would speak through me to my brothers and sisters in Christ. You know exactly what they need. You know the struggles of their lives. Holy Spirit, fill us with your wisdom, especially during these times that we are living through in our world. Give us the courage, Holy Spirit, to remain steadfast in our faith. 
Most Blessed Mother Mary, Our Queen, Our Lady, thank you so much for always being with us, for being our mother, for always guiding us to your Son, our Lord Jesus. Thank you for your, your, your humility, your love, your total surrender to the will of God. Most Blessed Mother Mary, I pray that you would cover each and every one of us and our families and the entire world with your mantle of love and protection. Protect us from the attacks of the enemy, especially during these days. We know, Blessed Mother Mary, that you will triumph. We pray for God's plan to unfold through you in our world so that we can reach the triumph of your Immaculate Heart. Just as you promised in your apparitions and Fatima, and you are fulfilling these days in Medjugorje. Saint Joseph, terror of demons, pillar of families, and protector and patron of the Universal Church, intercede for us, Saint Joseph, especially for the youth, the children of today's world, protect their innocence and purity Protect them from everything that is coming their way. They are being bombarded by so many false ideologies. Saint Joseph, I also entrust into your hands anyone who grew up without the love or the protection or the presence of a father so that you would become their adoptive father just like you were with our Lord Jesus Christ. I continue to pray for all the priests, deacons, religious men and women, nuns. I pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for his intentions, for his health. I pray for all the bishops in the world, that they would always be guided by the Holy Spirit. I pray for all the priests and the religious. We so often forget that they are human like us, that they are broken like us, that they need our prayers and our love and not our judgment. Lord Jesus, heal them with your precious blood from the moment of their conception until the present moment so that they would become beacons of light and love in our world that is so filled with darkness and despair and give them the strength and give all of us your church the strength to remain steadfast in the faith until our last breath i continue to pray for all the sick so many people are sick with cancer lord jesus sick with heart problems, high blood pressure, arthritis, diabetes, dialysis, dementia, Alzheimer, Parkinson, and so many other illnesses, it, problems with their immune system, different disabilities, autism. Lord Jesus, I pray for each person who is struggling with any kind of illness right now. Heal all of us, Lord Jesus. Heal us first spiritually, because that's the most important healing, the healing of the soul. And if it is the will of God the Father to grant us physical healing so that it would be for the glory of God the Father. Lord Jesus, we know nothing is impossible for you. If it is not the will of the Father for us to be healed here on earth, I pray, Lord Jesus, that we would be given the grace to always unite our suffering to your cross for our own sanctification and the sanctification of the people in our families 
and the people around us. Lord Jesus, I continue to pray for all pregnant women that they would choose life, that their babies would be born without any problems or complications, and also for all the couples, married couples, who would like to conceive a child and they haven't been able to. Lord Jesus, nothing is impossible for you to grant them this great desire of their heart one of your children. I continue to pray for all the people who are in agony right now or who will take their last breath, whether it's today or during this week, that they would take refuge in your, in your divine mercy during their last breath on earth. And for all the souls in purgatory, especially the souls that nobody prays for them, that they would soon be enjoying your glory. I also pray for all the families who are mourning the loss of a loved one. Come Holy Spirit and comfort them and console them. I pray also for all the people who are suffering from loneliness. So many people feel so lonely, Lord Jesus. Allow them to feel your presence with them, that they are never, ever alone. I also pray for peace, peace in our hearts. We cannot have peace in our hearts, as Our Lady always tells us, if we do not have peace with you first. I pray for peace in our families and peace in the entire world. Lord Jesus, I also pray right now for each person who is listening to me via, via, via Radio Maria or via my YouTube channel. Lord Jesus, I surrender to you everything that they have in their hearts. My dear sister, my dear brother, surrender to the Lord everything that you have in your heart. He loves you more than you can imagine. Give him what's in your heart. He always, always listens to each prayer and always answers our prayers in his perfect timing and according to the will of the Father in the best form for our own sanctification and the sanctification of our loved ones. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise you and we glorify you. And we pray all of this, Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, if you are just tuning in, my name is Samia Zumaut, and you are listening to the Healing of the Soul. And this is a call-in program. So if you feel prompted to call in, the phone number in the studio is 1-866-333-6279, 1-866-333-6279. Um, today's topic is whether do we really trust in the divine mercy of Jesus for all of us? And if we don't, why is it that we don't trust? You know, we are in the, we are going through right now the novena of divine mercy. This Sunday we celebrate the great feast of divine mercy. Uh, I'm not sure if you are familiar. I think most people are familiar with Saint Faustina, uh, such a great saint. Uh, if you have never read her diary, I absolutely recommend that you read it it's a big diary but I know for me on a personal level when I read it uh, during Lent one time it truly truly uh, I can say it changed my life and so um, I would like to share with you uh, some um, paragraphs of this di diary this Sunday April 7th 
is Divine Mercy Sunday. And Jesus, it's such an important day for all of us because Jesus promised St. Faustina on that day that those who confess their sins and take, receive communion on that day, they will receive not only forgiveness for their sins, but also total remission of the punishment due to their sins. Basically, in other words, it's as if it's like they go through baptism all over again. They start from zero. There's nothing greater than that. This is the unfathomable mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ for all of us. And in order to, for us to observe the Feast of Divine Mercy, we must, first of all, celebrate the Feast on the Sunday after Easter, which is next Sunday. And we must sincerely repent of all our sins, again, through a confession, whether it's doesn't necessarily have to be on that day, but within eight days of um, the feast, as well as we need to put our trust in our Lord Jesus Christ and venerate the image of his divine mercy. And of course, we must be merciful to others through our actions and through our words. Our Lord Jesus told St. Faustina, I'm going to read a couple of paragraphs uh, from her diary. He told her the following in paragraph 1578. The graces of my mercy are taken with only one container, and that is trust. The more a soul trusts, the more it will receive. The souls that trust without limits are my great consolation because in them I pour out all the treasures of my graces. I am glad that they ask for a lot because my desire is to give a lot. That is so beautiful. And that was part paragraph 1578. You know, when, we, when he asked her to put the inscription, Jesus, I trust in you, on the divine mercy image, Jesus, I trust in you, says so much. If we truly, truly trust in him, which means trust in his mercy, trust in his love for all of us, we just went through his passion, death, and resurrection. And he did it out of pure love for each and every one of us personally. Even though, unfortunately, we have such a hard time believing that. Believing that Jesus loves each and every one of us personally. He would have died for you personally on the cross. He would have d gone through all the suffering, the scourging, uh, the incredible, incredible, excruciating, uh, horrible death on the cross for you and me personally, even if you were the only person alive on earth. But we have a hard time believing that. We doubt that. No matter how old we are, uh, we so often don't believe it. And that goes again. We know the enemy is always attacking us. We know the enemy is always attacking our mind, our thoughts, to make us doubt that Jesus loves us. Because he's always telling us, you know, uh, do you really believe Jesus would do that for you? And he taps into our brokenness from our childhood. Uh, where do we learn trust from? We learn trust in our childhood when we have a mom and a dad who love us, who protect us, who provide for us. Uh, and when, that, when we have that kind of a dynamic in our family, 
we learn trust and we project that trust onto God. However, when we come from a broken family, we live in a broken world, so we're all broken uh, on different levels. Uh, each one of us has gone through different different story in his or her life. And the enemy is always tapping into the lies we believed about ourselves in our childhood to make us doubt in Jesus' love for us. To make us believe that, you know what, Jesus does not love you. Jesus will never forgive you. And that is why so many people uh, go to confession and confess the same sin over and over again because they do not believe that Jesus would forgive them for whatever sin they might have committed. I think one of the, the sins that are often confessed over and over is the sin of abortion. I've heard that from so many women where they say, I cannot uh, forgive myself for having aborted my child. And I go to confession over and over and over. And that reminds me of the words of our Lord Jesus also to St. Faustina, when one time he told her that it offends him more, the fact that he, she doesn't trust in his forgiveness for her more than the sin that she committed. So that is how important it is for us to truly, truly trust in his mercy and love for us. No matter how great your sins are, including all of our sins, the sins of our, the entire world, they do not amount to one token or fraction of his infinite mercy for all of us. In fact, Jesus also said in paragraph 1520 to St. Faustina, he said to her, I have opened my heart as a living fountain of mercy. Let all souls draw life from it. Let all souls draw life from it. Let them approach the sea of mercy with great trust. Sinners will attain justification and the just will be confirmed in good. Whoever places his trust in my mercy will be filled with my divine peace at the hour of death. You know, when he says, let all souls draw life from it, from his heart, which is a living fountain of mercy, mercy and love, we are alive, physically speaking, so often, but unfortunately, so often we are dead on the inside. We go through the motions of life, but we do not feel the joy of life. Regardless of the circumstances of our lives, we all have a cross to carry in this world. It's through the cross no matter what the cross might be, whether it's a physical illness, whether it's a situation in your family that you're going through, as long, of course, as the cross is not mortal sin, mortal sin has a cure, which is called confession. Get out of the sin through a confession, through a repentant confession, and you will feel liberated. You, confession is the greatest, one of the greatest sacraments after of course uh, the Eucharist because the Eucharist is the true presence of our Lord Jesus Christ but with confession our Lord Jesus bathes us with his precious blood he sets us free it's like an exorcism that we voluntarily go through and we are at the foot of his cross and Jesus through a priest is setting us free from whatever uh, we have done in our lives, we are all sinners, but we just need to trust in his mercy, as he says, to give us life, to give us life, the spiritual life. He's talking about the spiritual life so that we can truly, truly feel his peace, feel his 
joy no matter what the circumstances of our lives are uh, I know myself when I was in Medjugorje at the age of 20 and now we're talking almost 34 years ago it will be 34 years in June it was the crucial two moments in my life were when I was in adoration before our Lord Jesus and then after adoration when I experienced his incredible love for me during adoration where he went into the depth of my darkness my wounds my the places that I hid from others in my soul and when I experienced his immense love love for me which made me go to confession I saw after experiencing his love my sins and after I went to confession which lasted an hour I left the confessional a brand new person it's as if I was reborn again that is the power of his mercy that is the power of confession I absolutely absolutely recommend confession for anyone who is afraid of going to confession or thinks they don't need to go to confession or believes that maybe I shouldn't go to confession because uh, why should I confess to a priest priests also go to confession themselves we are all sinners however in the confessional Jesus is present through the priest and Jesus will bathe us with his precious blood to cleanse us to liberate us from whatever spirits we have opened ourselves to because of our sins and I believe that is why we feel so liberated after we go to confession you know I remember that day when I went to confession at the age of 20 and I hadn't been to confession since my first communion which I was 13 years without confession I remember I felt like I was at least 20 to 50 pounds lighter because really I was spiritually lighter because of all the spirits that were no longer in me after confession that is the power of confession and Jesus also said to Saint Faustina in paragraph 1521 he said to her my daughter do not tire of proclaiming my mercy in this way you will refresh this heart of mine which burns with a flame of pity for sinners tell my priests that hardened sinners will repent on hearing their words when they speak about my unfathomable mercy about the compassion I have for them in my heart to priests who proclaim and extol my mercy I will give them wondrous power I will anoint their words and touch the hearts of those to whom they will speak that was in paragraph 1521 it's so beautiful to hear our Lord say do not tire of proclaiming my mercy in this way you will refresh this heart of mine as I'm speaking these words I pray that I am refreshing his heart as you listen to me as you listen to his words through me telling you that his heart is burning for you because he loves you because he loves me we are all sinners he wants to pour out his mercy and love in our hearts that is why he died for you and for me that is why he became so humble taking on our humanity to pay the price of our sins to triumph over death so that we can share in eternal life with him 
Our Lord loves us more than we can ever imagine. But the problem is that we doubt. We doubt in His mercy. We doubt in His love. We doubt because of our own lies. And that is what I want to get to. Why is it again that we doubt? I want to remind you if you are just tuning in, you are listening to Samia Zuma with the program Healing of the Soul. And the number in the studio is 1-866-333-6279. 1-866-333-6279. And if you are listening to me and you are doubting in Jesus' love or mercy for you, Please call in. I would love to pray with you. I would love to pray for your intentions. Because most likely, you've been through something in your childhood. uh, Sometimes even from the womb of our mothers. Something that you lived through. You know, the most typical scenarios that make, make people doubt is A, abandonment of a father or a mother. Um, Neglect of the parents, lack of protection of the parents, uh, abuse by the mother or a father, um, rejection in the childhood, um, absent parents, even though they might physically be there, or sometimes lack of confirmation, lack of affirmation of the children, uh, living in a home that's violent, where there's often drunkenness or even drug abuse, Um, divorce. Divorce is huge for children because it ruptures their security. Um, And what happens in those memories is that we start believing lies about ourselves. And the enemy takes advantage of these things that we lived through in our childhood to inject us with his venom, with his lies. He is the father of lies to tell us, you are not loved. You will never be forgiven. You are worthless. You are an accident. You should have never been born. And we start projecting these lies onto God because if we cannot trust our own parents whom we see because they either abandoned us or um, or abused us in any way shape or form Uh, how can we trust in God whom we cannot see and so that is where the enemy if we do not take refuge in our Lord Jesus Christ if we do not go to him If we were not taught about him, we start projecting onto him all the lies that we have believed about ourselves. I hear from so many people, adults, who tell me, Samia, you know, and they could be in their 70s, 80s, I really don't know if I trust or I really believe that Jesus exists. Because why did Jesus allow these things to happen to me when I was a child if he really is alive why does he allow so much suffering wars evil in the world why does he allow why did he allow for me to be abused why did he allow for my parents to abandon me or to get a divorce and the answer to that is actually A simple answer. God gave all of us free will. God gave our parents free will. He gave our grandparents free will. He gave each human being, including all the angels, free will. The will to follow him, to follow his commandments, to trust him, or the will to follow the enemy, 
fall for the lies of the enemy and take refuge in the tactics of the enemy that kill our souls and often kill our bodies. That's what addictions are all about. Addictions to alcohol, to drugs, to sex, to pornography, to um, gambling. Addictions are people's ways to numb the pain that they felt in their childhood. And these are addictions, these are the addictions themselves are tools from the enemy. Tools from the enemy to kill our souls and so often to kill our bodies. Because really, when somebody overdoses on drugs, not only is it killing their soul, but it's killing their body. And you see that so often these days, especially with the drugs uh, that are available these days, that just from one pill, somebody can overdose and can die. And so our Lord Jesus is waiting for all of us. You know, all we have to do is meditate on a crucifix. So important to meditate on a crucifix. He is waiting for us with open arms, telling us, I love you. I am mercy itself. I am love incarnate. There is nothing in your life that you have been through that I am not capable of healing. Come to me. Approach the fountain of my love. Approach the fountain of my mercy. Take advantage of Divine Mercy Sunday to start completely new. Go to confession. Receive the Eucharist. Meditate on his Divine Mercy image. Pray the Chaplet of Divine Mercy on that day and Jesus will give you a completely brand new start. That is how much he loves us. He wants to share eternal life with us. Go to him with all the pain that you have in your heart. He waits for us in every tabernacle in the world. He waits for us in every chapel of adoration in the world. He waits for us. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but you do have a caller. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Claire. Hello. Welcome to my program. How may I serve you? Well, I just thank you for your great words today on Jesus' love and mercy. Praise God, my sister. And um, I'd like to... I would like a prayer um, for a few things for um, people that have asked me for prayer. Sure. Anything okay. Anything um, in particular? So, yes, we all know that Jesus' love and mercy just covers all of our sins. And I just would like a special prayer for um, a a lady named Lexi, who possibly going to prison for um, killing someone in a hit and run accident. And it was because of drug taking of the driver, Lexi. And also prayers for our two youngest sons and their friends that are very much abusing their bodies with drugs and alcohol and trying to find Jesus, but not there yet. So just their salvations and that they would give up their bad habits and turn to the Lord and his mercy. Amen. Um, yes, we def I'll definitely pray for Lexi. I just to clarify, Lexi was on drugs when that happened. That's what I have heard. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, always, unfortunately, with drugs, uh, there's brokenness, right? Um, Correct. Uh, brokenness, uh, and the Lord knows where her brokenness is coming from. Um, so let's take refuge right now. Pray for her. Pray for your sons and all the young people, the youth of today, who are so tempted by drugs um, to, to truly kill their souls. So... Let's close our eyes if we are, if we can, 
and unite in prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the lives of Lexi and the children of my sister in Christ who is calling. Lord Jesus, I pray right now that you would cover Lexi with your precious blood, cover the children of my sister who is calling with your precious blood, and all the young people today in today's world who are abusing drugs or alcohol. Cover them with your precious blood and allow your blood to flow from the first moment they were conceived in their mother's womb. Lord Jesus, you know the circumstances of their conception. You know what they've been through in the nine months in their mother's womb. But you also know what happened in their lives after they came out of the womb to this world. Lord Jesus, cleanse them from any spirits of rejection, abandonment, any spirits of abuse, whether it's physical, emotional, or sexual, any spirits of self-hatred, any spirits of lies from the enemy that I am not good enough, my life is not worth living, I am worthless, I am abandoned, whatever lies they believed about themselves and especially the lies that they are projecting onto you God, that you also have abandoned them, that you also, you were not present to protect them. Lord Jesus, by the power of your precious blood and by the power of your name, Jesus, Heavenly Father, I ask you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, to rebuke the spirit of addiction to drugs and heal them from the root of that addiction. I ask you, Lord Jesus, for Lexi, as she goes to prison right now, that she would be embraced by your love, that she would have a personal encounter with you, Lord Jesus, with your immense love for her, transforming her life, protect her from all the harms that go on in prisons, Lord Jesus. Cover her and seal her with your precious blood and seal the children of my sister who is on the phone with me right now, as well as all the youth and the children of today's world and their friends, all the young people. Seal them and protect them with your precious blood, Lord Jesus. Heal them, Lord. Heal them from the root of their addiction to drugs. You are the only divine physician of the soul, Lord Jesus, and we trust completely in you. And by the merits of this time, this the graces of your passion, death and resurrection, Lord Jesus, pour on them, pour in their hearts your immense love for them, Lord Jesus. Liberate them from the lies they believe about themselves. Liberate them, Lord Jesus. Allow your truth to come in so that they would know that they are infinitely loved by you. That you have died for them personally on the cross. That all they have to do is to take refuge in your heart. Most Blessed Mother Mary, Our Lady, I pray that you would cover them with your mantle of love and protection. Embrace them with your maternal love. Take them to your son Jesus as you did with me so that they would fall in love with him, so that they would know how much he loves them. 
Intercede for them, Blessed Mother Mary. St. Joseph, Terror of Demons. I entrust Lexi and these young men or children into your hands and all the youth all the young men and women in today's world who are abusing drugs or alcohol I entrust them into your hands so that you would protect them and you would intercede for them I pray this Heavenly Father in the name of your Son our Lord Jesus Christ Amen how do you feel, my sister? Thank you. Thank you. We have brought in tears to our eyes. And I know that God hears every one of our prayers. And I just thank you, Lord, for this prayer warrior who is praying for all these intentions of mine. Thank, thank you. you. And, and, thank and, you and I will continue to pray for them. And I strongly recommend that you pray the rosary for them daily. The rosary is such a strong yeah. weapon. Um, through the rosary, uh, we underestimate the power of the rosary. I think of the rosary as a nuclear weapon against the, the enemy. As we meditate on the life of our Lord Jesus, we're not just meditating um, uh, verbally. If we really do it from the heart, we are entering into each mystery literally god is outside of time and space so when you're meditating for example on the resurrection of our lord jesus christ or on his crucifixion all the merits all the merits that god poured uh, on humanity uh, through the passion death and resurrection of our lord jesus christ he will be doing that as you are meditating on the rosary because god is outside of time and space and that is why the enemy cannot stand it so um, the enemy is outside of time and space. So when you are meditating on the crucifixion, he is standing uh, before the cross that defeated him. So take let's let's pray the rosary and not give up uh, because we, we we know we the Lord has triumphed. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. I love you and God bless you. I love you too. Christ is risen. Happy. A glorious Easter for you and your family. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, my program has come to an end. I want to remind you, please take advantage of Divine Mercy Sunday. We are on the fourth day of the novena uh, of the Chaplet of Divine Mercy, uh, bringing souls to our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and so... Uh, take advantage, go to confession uh, during this week, uh, go to Mass on Sunday, uh, uh, celebrate the Divine Mercy, uh, and know that all your sins, uh, as well as the punishment of your sins, will be completely erased. A new baptism for all of us. How much more love uh, can Jesus love us than that? Uh, count on my prayers for you and for your family, and I ask for your prayers for me as well. I love you all, but more importantly than that, Jesus loves us infinitely. God bless you all. Thank you, Samia. Thank you, Claire. God bless you. You too. Bye-bye now. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. My soul. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, on my YouTube channel, Ivan Velasquez, hi, my beautiful sister, it's great to see you, uh, as always, um, Francisco uh, Alcalde, uh, Dios te bendiga, Feliz Pascua de Resurrección, Olga Hernández, Dios te bendiga también desde México. Gloria a Dios, gloria a Dios. Uh, Olga Hernández, uh, God bless you. Um, 
and I will uh, pray for your intentions. Um, and thank you for your prayers. Uh, and you are also in Mexico. Praise God. Mireya Cota. Saludos también en México, desde México. Graciela Hernández. Saludos, Graciela. Carmen uh, Cortez. Um, gracias por verme en Mundo Católico. Um, déjame ver. ¿Qué pasó con mis amigas que viajaron conmigo en Medjugorje? La que no creía en Dios se convirtió. Por la gloria de Dios, sí creía en Dios. Uh, entonces, uh, uh, cambiaron sus vidas en formas diferentes, aunque nunca regresaron a Medjugorje. Uh, excelente pregunta. Uh, uh, Carmen Cortés, no sabes inglés, pero me miras. Uh, te, me escribes desde Colombia, bendito sea Dios. Mañana uh, voy a tener mi programa en español a la misma hora. Uh, saludos a todos mis hermanos en Colombia. Los amo mucho. Uh, Margo, uh, Dios te bendiga. Alma Barrios, God bless you. Uh, thanks be to God for everything. Joel, uh, yes, I will definitely pray for your intentions. Uh, may the Lord Jesus uh, hear all the intentional intentions of your heart and count on my prayers, Joel. God bless you all. I love you all. Uh, viva Cristo Rey. Viva la Virgen de Guadalupe. Y viva San Jose. Long live Christ the King.